Welcome to the study of God's Word with pastor and author Ed Taylor, recorded live at Calvary Church in Aurora, Colorado. To learn more about the many resources available through Abounding Grace Media or to tune into our live stream services, visit us online at calvaryco.church or download our free Calvary Church app. Now here's Pastor Ed to take us into our study. Amen. Would you take your Bibles and open them to Matthew chapter 11? Matthew chapter 11. When you get there, I'll draw your attention to verse 25. In this little devo we're sharing, I've entitled, Come to Me. That's the instruction here in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 25. Let me read it to you. It says, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and the prudent, and it revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and he to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And as hardships begin to stack up in our lives, they add up one on top of another on top of another. We have different seasons. Some seasons are easier than others. Some seasons very challenging. As a church, we're in one of those seasons, a season I would call a season of heaviness. It's been very hard few weeks here for us individually and as a church. Besides the, the deep things that we've all been going through, there's been spiritual warfare. There's been very unusual spiritual warfare. There's been health crises and diagnoses, and there's been life and death situations. There's been prodigals revealed where you didn't know and things going on at work. And then, of course, there's the world that we're in, the political environment, the bad news that we get a constant stream of, the fears and anxieties. We as a church have lost a beloved pastor to sudden and unexpected death. But of course, Pastor Avant wasn't the only death in our church. There were many others in the last few weeks at just one of those seasons. You have the things that are going on in your life personally, and then you kind of walk into a church and you feel it. You can feel the heaviness. You can feel what something, something's not quite And then whatever you might be feeling at the time, the Holy Spirit's drawing you to, when you get those feelings, the Holy Spirit's drawing you to start praying. Just start praying about, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm feeling this, but I need to pray for this church. I need to pray for the sister next to me. I need to pray for the brother in front of me because it is one of those heavy seasons we've been walking along. And this weekend, I was thinking of the verse in Mark chapter six in verse 31, Jesus tells the disciples, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while. And there's that need that we get away. We just stop for a second of our regular routine. And of course, this is a literal, Jesus is saying, talking about being literally away to a deserted place, but they wouldn't be alone. Uh, It's not like they would do it individually. Uh, And here we are, applying this in our own lives, and we're going to break up the routine in an attempt to apply this verse in our own lives to get away, just to get away for a few moments from the regular routine and release, release. The instruction, well, before the instruction ever comes, you notice Jesus wants to make it clear that God can't be known unless he's revealed, And we're so grateful that he has revealed himself. He's revealed himself to us in his word. And we're so grateful that Jesus has led us to him and revealed through the power of the Holy Spirit. It says that nor does anyone know the Father except the Son and he to whom the Son wills to reveal him. And through the teaching of Jesus, he's revealed to us the Father. 
And then you're wondering, well, wait a minute, Ed, who, Pastor, who's Wills? Who's the one he's revealing? It sounds like it's only a selective group. And then the very next word Jesus says, he invites everybody that's weary, everybody that's carrying burdens, which basically is every human being on the planet Earth. All of us are carrying these weights and these burdens. Every one of us in this room has a burden, you know, you can't escape it. Besides all the things in your life and all the difficulties in your life and all the challenges that are layer upon layer upon layer. Sometimes folks will email me and share what they're going through and, and then my response can only be, man, this is, they'll say somewhere in, in, along in there that it's really hard and I, I read their note and I'm like, man, this is harder than hard. And that might be your story today. And I'm inviting you to obey the scriptures. That's where freedom is, obey the invitation. Jesus says, if you're weary, you're burdened, heavy, heavy, you know, heavy weights that you're carrying around that you're to come to him. Not to come to church, although that's in the right direction, or come to a sermon, or come to a pastor, or come to a radio or YouTube channel. Jesus invites you to come to him, to bring those cares and concerns to him in a very real way. You know, I received a couple emails. I opened them yesterday in the morning. One was from our missionaries in Uganda, reading their recent update. And as they're describing their life, I think the title of his email was just a hard season, I think is what he said. And there's been great deep grief going on out there, severe health issues, flying back and forth to Colorado to help their family. And it's just been one of those hard things. And I received another email from a brother that I barely know. A few, um, last year, about this time, I was invited. I got an urgent call from Pastor Al Pittman, said, can you go down uh, and drive down to the Springs and do this hospital visit for me? Because we can't make it now. He needs someone there now, and we can't be there for hours. Can you be there? And I said, sure. I'll do. So I drove down, and uh, you know, it was a tragic, tragic situation where their son was very ill. And uh, although when I left, he was alive, uh, they had to make decisions and he ended up passing away. And I met this brother, stayed in this brother's life. His name is Nick, if you want to remember to pray for him. And um, he sends an email out updating his friends and family. And yesterday, he, I think he was the one that used this phrase, layer after layer after layer of the things that he's been facing and the things that they're going through. And, and even the victory that the Lord's doing through their life. And you know, as a church, that's where we're at. Even if today you're in a, great, a place of great celebration, we're happy with you. We want you to celebrate. There may, there may be that sense where your singing and celebration will actually bless the person next to you. It reminded me of a time like this. We did this earlier this year uh, to, you know, because normally we do this on Wednesday nights. We have Wednesday night Bible study and uh, it's, it's actually easier uh, to just do a worship night on Wednesday than it is to rearrange the whole weekend. Uh, but nonetheless, we feel like it's a church thing that's needed. And that's why we rearrange things this weekend. But I was reminded back when um, my son passed away and I finally came back to church, but, but I came to the services. But you know, there were days I didn't want to be here. There were days when I didn't want to sing. I mean, I'd literally look up at the screen and see the words and like, I'm not singing that. I don't want to sing those words. And, you know, words like break me, shape me, mold me, like, no, no, thank you. I don't want to be broken. I'm already there. But, you know, being in the company of believers, people, even though I didn't want to sing that song, there was somebody next to me singing it for me and singing it over me. And that's the advantage of being in the room together where you're celebrating because you're in such a great place and you're like, wow, I'm celebrating. And yet your celebration in faith can be for the person next to you that really doesn't have a lot of faith today. And so wherever the station of your life is today, I want you, I want you to obey Jesus when he says, come to him. Let it be, let, like, like God desires not only Bible study, we do that here, and not only time of worship, we do that here, but a real, a real true experience with the one true living God, that he's ready to meet you here where you are, if you'll come to him, God does his part, you do your part. And as you do your part, God will meet you where you are. I, I was thinking back one more thing, like when it says, come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. It reminded me when I was in the business world, 
Because if I was in trouble, uh, I knew it because my boss would not call me, he would come down to my office and he'd show up in my office and then he'd go in and close the door. Then he closed the blinds and I'm like, oh man, I'm in big trouble. He doesn't want anybody to see him, see him, what he's going to do to me or yell at me or whatever he's going to do. So he'd come back to my office and, and they, he would have a word for that. It was a phrase that he and the other bosses used and I hated it. He would say it was time for a come to Jesus meeting. You guys ever had that? Like I hate that use because it's such a misuse of coming to Jesus. When you come to him, it's not to be berated or put down or corrected for something you did wrong. When you come to Jesus, he's ready to comfort you and encourage you. He's ready to exchange the weights that you've been carrying with his. His burden is light, his yoke is easy, his yoke is, is ready, like that partnership that you have with him. And so you could say that today is one of those come to Jesus moments, but not like the world uses, but rather the Lord is ready to comfort you and prepare you even for this week. And so I invite you to obey the scriptures today as the worship team comes and let the Lord, let it be in song, let it be, if you can't sing, then hum. And if you can't hum, then cry. And if you can't cry, then just sit there and receive the Lord and read the words and listen to the room and let the whole, as you release yourself, I think, to the Holy Spirit, already in the first services, the first couple of services last night and earlier, the Lord has met us here. And he's ready to meet you here. And you guys, um, by technology, I know it's not exactly the same, but I'm telling you this, if you're ready to, to, to as if you're in the room with us right now, the Holy Spirit's ready to minister to you because he's not exclusive to a room. You know that, right? He's not exclusive to a room or to a building, but there is something special about being with the saints. So you guys online, you're, you're gonna have to really focus and exclude all the distractions so the Holy Spirit can meet you here. So Father, I pray, Lord, that you would meet us in this place, that we would have a, a sweet, we take back a phrase that the world is jacked up and you misused, and we would come to you, Jesus, today, where we would receive comfort and encouragement and strength and a reminder of your goodness, an affirmation of your love for us, that we are hidden in the beloved, a reminder of your sacrifice, of the blood that you shed for us, of your sovereign providential power in meeting us, revealing yourself to us, helping us. I pray God for the wanderer today. I pray for the wounded. I pray for the wounded. There, there are those here today that are wounded because uh, with a church wound or a dad wound or a family wound, or a, a world wound, God, sin has so wrecked us. And I pray that you would minister comfort. You would break down walls. You would soften hard, hard hearts. And of course, there's a lot of pain in the room so that you would comfort the mourning and the grieving and the widow and the widower, those that may have lost children or grandchildren, those weeping over a prodigal, those wrestling with their church life right now and where they are and where they belong and what's going to happen in the world and what's happening in politics and the geopolitical and it's overwhelming God. So we bring those overwhelming concerns to you today and we invite you to honor your word where you're enthroned in the praises of Israel. How much more are you enthroned in the praises of your church, your blood-bought church that you inhabit the praises of your people. So may you have your way with us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's start by standing, church. Just a few instructions. You have the freedom to stand, to sit, to kneel. This whole area is always open for that. All you have to do is get over yourself and say, okay, the Lord is calling me to kneel. The Lord is calling me to lay face down. The Lord is calling me to draw near and kind of use this stage as a, uh, you know, as, a, as an altar. It's not an altar, it's a stage, but by, by just saying, you know, Lord, I'm gonna come. And a song hits you or, uh, you know, something. So, so whatever, you have freedom in case you, you have freedom. You have freedom to let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. You have freedom there. There's little pockets of the sanctuary, of the sanctuary that you could use. You guys downstairs, uh, you know, if you're not down there because of kids or something, you should come up here. It's different than just even being downstairs on the screen. 
And uh, we're going to follow Ian, Pastor Ian, and the whole worship team. And then he's going to take the service from here. So let's seek the Lord together, church. And all who are thirsty, all who are weak, come to the fountain. Dip your heart in the stream. Of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy. His deep cries out to deep, we sing. Thank you. 
has eyes to see ears to hear my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. But as we release and we respond, you restore and you renew. worship you, God, today. God, I believe there's a stirring and a settling. You're stirring our hearts, God, to, to sing a new song. You're stirring our hearts, Lord, to respond. And you're settling our hearts, God, in your love. settling our hearts, Lord, in your truth. We find ourselves, Lord, in this tension of stirring and settling, Lord, and you meet us there. Settled in your truth. Settled in your love. Finding ourselves free in you. And stirring our hearts, God, to walk in that freedom, to worship in that freedom, to behold the beauty of the to inquire in his temple. Lord, there's one thing, Lord, one thing that I ask and one thing will I seek. Lord, may that be our heart today. One thing I ask and one thing I seek that I might dwell in your house, God. That I may inquire in your temple. Your temple, the temple of the Lord. Help us, Jesus, to fix our eyes upon you so that the earth and the world and the cares and concerns of you would fade away. Empty us, God, today. It says this in Psalm 95. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. Just to give a little more instruction for this morning, as the psalmist would write, let us worship and bow down. There's a, there's a literal sense of bowing down, this word barak. 
means to kneel, to bow, to, to get low, to honor. And maybe in this stirring, God is telling you, there's a, there's a hardness of heart of not being able to honor him. in the spirit because you're not willing to do it in the flesh. And oftentimes I find in my my own life that if I'm able to do things or respond in such a way where I actively do it, God's spirit starts to break down things that I've been helping to prop up. And so maybe that's you today that you need to come, as you worship, you need to come and bow down to get low as a sign of honoring, as a sign of surrender. And then Psalm 22 says that God is is enthroned in the praises of his people, and there's a specific word for that. Praise, it's, it's tehillah. And that word means this praise that bubbles up from deep within us. It's not scripted. It wasn't practiced. It's this praise that as we think about his goodness, his faithfulness, how he loves you, that there would be this thing that bubbles up within you, inside of you, and it comes out. God is enthroned in the praises of his people spontaneous praise. And so we're going to continue to worship this morning. So we find ourselves in this stirring and settling, stirring and settling. We just encourage you to worship freely. That we would make the decision today worship the Lord, not worrying about what our neighbor might think of us, our spouse might think of us, our friend might think of us, but to fully just surrender and release what is deserving to the Lord.
There's a God who weeps. There's a God who weeps. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me. Hallelujah to the Son of Suffering. Yes, hallelujah. Can only be good. Can't 
Amen. The Lord is good. Do you guys want to do one more song? All right. God bless you guys. <laughs> you guys want to do one more song? I think it's good for us to leave this place um, just really thinking about why we sing, why we praise. So if there's breath in your lung, if there's breath in your lungs today, you have a reason to praise. And so um, there's a little tag part that we want to teach you, um, and it just goes. Uh, let's see. Uh, it just says, "Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord." And then that just repeats. All right. So we'll do this song, and we'll we'll tell you guys when to sing that. But you got to sing it with everything that's within you. Right. So we're gonna sing. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You guys with us? All right, let's sing it.
Church, would you lift your hands with us today? God, we honor you. We thank you for this time, Lord, to just gather together, Lord, to release these songs of praise, of adoration, Lord, to release our hearts to you, Lord, to know that in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. So we confess our weakness to you today, God, and we thank you, Lord, for the ministry of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that met us here and is meeting us here even now. God, be glorified in all that we do. Lord, go before us now. Help us, Lord, this week, that we might glorify you, Lord, in all that we do this week. We pray these things, Jesus, in your awesome name. And everyone said, amen. amen. We pray that you've been encouraged by this Bible study delivered live from the sanctuary of Calvary Church. For prayer, call us at 877-30-GRACE. That's 877-304-7223. To listen to this message in its entirety or to join us for our live stream services, visit us online at calvaryco.church or download our free Calvary Church app. Be blessed as you worship Jesus this week.